Hello and welcome to the Wolf's Den. I'm Dave here with Mary Ellen and today we are going to talk about something that I noticed when I was going through the books recently that uh, I personally think is significant. It is the finding of the dire wolves and the manner in which it happened. So to kick things off, I'm going to have Mary Ellen very quickly read the passage so we can start breaking down what exactly is significant about it. So here you go. Okay. That was when John reappeared on the crest of the hill before them. He waved and shouted down at them. Father, Bran, come quickly, see what Rob has found. Then he was gone again. Jory rode up beside them. Trouble, my lord? Beyond a doubt, his lord father said. Come, let us see what mischief my sons have rooted out now. He sent his horse into a trot. Jory and Bran and the rest came after. They found Rob on the river bank north of the bridge, with John still mounted beside him. The late summer snows had been heavy this moon turn. Rob stood knee deep in white, his hood pulled back so the sun shone in his hair. He was cradling something in his arm, while the boys talked in hushed, excited voices. The riders picked their way carefully through the drifts, groping for solid footing on the hidden, uneven ground. Jory Cassell and Theon Greyjoy were the first to reach the boys. Greyjoy was laughing and joking as he rode. Bran heard the breath go out of him. Gods, he exclaimed, struggling to keep control of his horse as he reached for his sword. Jory's sword was already out. Rob, get away from it, he called as his horse reared under him. Rob grinned and looked up from the bundle in his arms. She can't hurt you, he said. She's dead, Jory. Bran was afire with curiosity by then. He would have spurned the pony faster, but his father made them dismount beside the bridge and approach on foot. Bran jumped off and ran. By then, John, Jory, and Theon Greyjoy had all dismounted as well. What in the seven hells is it? Greyjoy was saying. A wolf, Rob told him. A freak, Greyjoy said. Look at the size of it. Okay. So she might have even gone a little farther than we needed her to there, but there's a lot of really significant information in this passage. First, I guess we should break down right from the start that when John came back, he gave Rob credit for finding them, which is interesting because Rob didn't find them. It says on every single page in the app that John found the direwolves. Yes. Not Rob. Yet when he came back, he deferred to the trueborn son and gave Rob the credit for finding them, which I don't even know what it means, but it just kind of shows you something about John. Yes. In some way, maybe John won the race. They were racing to the bridge. That's how this all happened to begin with. Mm -hmm. John does tell Benjen, I think, in the next chapter, or John's first point of view chapter, that he's the better horse. He's better at riding than Rob. Yes. So let's just say for the sake of argument here, say that John just wiped the floor with Rob in a horse race like he always does. So he gave Rob the credit for finding the dire wolves. So Rob had a victory, even though it, John had a victory. Because that's just like the kind of guy that John is. Yes, because they had a healthy competitive thing going on between them. And it seemed in a lot of cases John kind of edged over Rob. Not by much, but... When he lists the things that they were good at, like John was better at math than him. He was better at sword fighting than him and he was better at riding a horse than him right even if it's by a small margin in a competitive nature with boys being a little bit better is still better he often was beating rob at stuff <laughs> let's just say more often than not john if they had a competition john won yes but the interest other interesting thing is that he well he gave him credit but they were racing to the bridge something drew them kind of away from the bridge and this is where the next really interesting fact is that I noticed. From the road, you cannot see the dire wolves. You can't. Bran and all of them were on the road and then dismounted and walked over. Jory 
and Theon didn't even see the direwolf until they didn't get off their horses. They rode their horses all the way off the side of the bridge and down to the riverbank where Rob was. And then, once they were right there, then they could see it. So how did John find the direwolves if you can't see the direwolves from the road? And this is in the midst of racing. Like, they were racing. Now, granted, the bridge was the end of the race. So they had, like, run by, but then there would have been, like, the, you know, the casual guy shit-talking that would have been going on after one of them won. Yeah. So let's just say John won or Rob won. We'll say John and won. And John was heckling them a little bit, and, and they, they were, were wheeling around on their horses and talking to each other. But how did they find the direwolves? You can't see them from the road. It's subtle. But you can't see them from the road. You can't see the direwolves until you're all the way, way off the road where Rob is. Almost on top of them. Yes, because the snow is too deep. The thing died. The snow is way higher. The snow is like two and a half feet deep. It's up to his knee. Mm-hmm. It's up past his knee, it said. So he, that's two foot at least deep snow. No dead body sticks up two feet. Yeah. So even a big, huge direwolf's body is not sticking up two feet. No. The little tiny little miniature puppies <laughs> are definitely not sticking up two feet. No. So how did they find them? Very interesting. I kind of have a theory. All right. <laughs> so this is where we go to later. I guess we should skip ahead. Do you want to read the passage again? Yeah. We'll, we'll skip ahead to... Um, Right here. When John finds ghost. Begins with halfway. Okay. Halfway across the bridge, John pulled up suddenly. What is it, John? Their Lord Father asked. Can't you hear it? Bran could hear the wind in the trees, the clatter of their hooves on the ironwood planks, the whimpering of his hungry pup, but John was listening to something else. There, John said. He swung his horse around and galloped back across the bridge. They watched him dismount where the direwolf lay dead in the snow, watched him kneel. A moment later, he was riding back to them, smiling. He must have crawled away from the others, John said. Or been driven away, their lord father said, looking at the sixth pup. His fur was white, where the rest of the litter was gray. His eyes were as red as the blood of the ragged man who had died that morning. Bran thought it curious that this pup alone would have opened his eyes, while the others were still blind. Okay. So, in this scene right here, John heard nothing. There was no sound. None of them heard anything. Plus, we know for a fact that Ghost never makes a sound ever. Ghost has literally never made a sound. No. In the entire story, Ghost makes exactly zero sounds. So, if John found this wolf this way, could George have been laying out kind of a backwards diagram of how John found the wolves the first time. He was on the bridge and he heard something that no one else heard. Because we know he couldn't have seen them because the people on the bridge and on the road can't see the dire wolves there. So he has to have heard them. Now, is it possible that one of the little pups made a noise? A little squeak or something? Whatever little puppies, whatever noise little puppies make? I guess it's possible. But with all the other stuff going on, it's, it's the nature, there's wind, there's other things. I don't know. It just seems to me like something weird happened there. And John somehow has like some sort of instant bond to the direwolves as soon as he became near them. And he was like able to sense them or whatever it was that he did that allowed him to go back and walk straight to it. He didn't, like, have to look around. 
No. If you look at that scene right there, Ghost is white. They were all standing right there and couldn't see Ghost. Yet John got onto his horse, was riding away, heard it, turned his horse around, rode straight back, got off his horse, walked straight to where Ghost was, and picked him up. Even though Ghost doesn't make any noise. So if he could do it in that instance, is that how John found the wolves to begin with? That's kind of what I'm thinking. The working theory. The working theory is John sensed them or heard them using some sort of magical means. Since you can't see them from the road, that seems more likely than anything else. Which would be extraordinarily significant once again. I mean, it's significant in itself that John is the one that found the direwolves. Which it states. Which it states on multiple pages. John's page, Rob's page, Bran's page, probably the other kids' pages. I didn't look before we started this. But I would imagine that it probably says, if there's a reference to them getting the wolves, it'll probably say, the wolves that John found, like it does in all the other ones. So John, the alleged Targaryen, <laughs> is the one that found the Stark direwolves and instantly bonded to, the, to yeah. his wolf. Yep instant bond which is the only explanation I can think of for how he heard Ghost since we know Ghost doesn't make any noise so John quite possibly found the dire wolves through his warging ability or some magical sixth sense that drew him directly to the dire wolves and then it was John John drove the entire scene actually right to right up to the point where the Stark children got to keep the direwolves because of John. Mm -hmm. John makes the direwolf, the whole direwolf's um, plot line take place. Yes, he because it was them, when he spoke that it changed that, everything. That everything changed, and he said, It seems like your kids are meant to have them. So, yeah, he was the driving force behind, it seems like, like what we're viewing from this perspective, he could be the driving force in finding them and in getting, and then the kids getting to keep them. Yes. And how important they are. He basically said to his father, it seems like this was kind of a gift from the gods or something. Like they were meant to have them. And if this is like the gods working for the Starks to have them, why are they working through the non-Stark for the Starks to have them? And why was sense. Ned, and we've talked about this before, so kind of like heartbroken when he's like, but don't you want one? Yes. He, he Like he felt like John should have one. Yet, John was going to forego getting one, and then he got one anyways. It's just like it was, it was like destiny, but destiny acted through John to make it happen. Some like intu intuition drew him to this random patch off the side of the road. Yeah. It does seem like Rob potentially with his, or actually the one that Rob picks up ends up being Summer, because he hands him... To uh, Bran later in that scene. You want to hold them and he hands them to Bran and that one becomes Bran's. Now, based on the condition of the direwolf, does it seem like it had been there? Because they would have taken the same route to the beheading, right? Or did she just give birth while they were doing the beheading? I'm going to say that that's not the case because Bran didn't like... George is pretty graphic. If the direwolves were just born, they would be like still m messy from being born. For, yeah, because he makes it realistic. Because he would make it realistic. Like they had been born like a day or so ago. They probably did ride right past it and not notice it. On the way there. But everyone was talking and, that, and blah, 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 blah. But that just goes solemn. to show you too that you can't, you couldn't see them. Yeah, because they would have ridden or they would have already oh, ridden past them and not seen them. But something on the way back drew John there. Yes, like something even got his attention during what you know was some young man shit talking that was going on based on whoever won the race. Mm -hmm. And but it was so buried race. that even on the way there, you nobody noticed. So. 
how would you find it uh, other than magical means? It doesn't seem like it's possible for them to have found it or found the direwolves through anything other than magical means. Because what draws you out into the two and a half feet snowdrifts? Yeah, why would you go over there? No reason to go over exactly. there. That's exactly. That's a very important thing that you noticed. It just like, Nothing grabbed would take... my attention. Yeah. I was like, wait a second. You can't see them from the road. That's a really important detail that I had never thought of when I was doing this last time. Going through the books again. It was like this weird moment where I was like, wait a second, how did he find them? And then I started thinking about, well, how did he find Ghost? He heard something that wasn't there, which makes me wonder, like, did he hear it or feel it or... Because after he heard it, he heard it, he turned around, and then he seemed to feel where he needed to go, and he drove his horse straight to it, or rode his horse, drove his horse. Like straight as an arrow. Yeah, he went V-line straight to the exact spot. He goes, do you hear that? And then, be, like you said. And then everyone else was like, no. And then he was like, he there. Was... And he turned around and he rode straight to it. To the wolf that makes literally... To the horse. To, to the mute wolf. Yeah. <laughs> Like, we know that it didn't make any noise because it never makes any noise. Ever. Like, the most defining feature, I guess, of, Besides his characteristic yeah, but it's of, of the Ghost is that he makes no noise. Ever. So, we were just thinking that that would be a cool little thing to talk about because I feel like... Furthering John's connection to the North... And the Starks in particular, yeah. like being the Stark that found the direwolves, it all just kind of is like another indicator nail in the RLJ coffin. Yeah, <laughs> um, you know we like those. I love finding finding extra, nails, finding extra nails <laughs> laying around that I can drive into that coffin and be like, you know what? Here you go, bang, 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 bang. Yep, John found the direwolves because he is the truest Stark of them all. He found them. Maybe the only he one convinced, if they're all snows. Yeah. He convinced their father to let them keep him. He created the entire direwolf. He is almost single handedly responsible for the direwolves. Existing the plots in the story. That the yeah. The direwolves play no role in the story without John. John is the most important character to the direwolves playing a role in the story. Because he's a dragon. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, that makes sense. It's like, yep, because he's a dragon, obviously. And people would be like, well, he's a dragon and a wolf. And I was like, then why is everything all about the wolves and why is he the central character? Should have actually had Rob find them like John gave him credit for. If that was the case, Rob should have found them. Not John. And like... The situation is, Rob got false credit for it. Rob is the false Stark, getting exactly. false credit for the direwolves. Yeah. It's like it's all symbolically perfect. But I mean, and even in the show that we don't talk about, we like to forget he ended up in the north with his wolf. Yeah, they called the episode where him and Danny get together the dragon and the wolf, not the dragon and the dragon. No, the dragon and the wolf. He's the wolf. Because he's the wolf. He's the ultimate Stark. This is one of the first chapters George R. R. Martin wrote, and he gave it, he gave John a significant role in the integration of the direwolves. When Brand's Which are like two magical two beings brothers, that we meet. You yeah. meet dragons and direwolves. Yeah, that's like the two main There's ones. talks of other ones. Like, you hear rumors of Unicorn, we, but we haven't met him. Yeah. Of Krakens and... Yeah, and there were those... That thing that attacked Danny from the Sorrowful Men. Stuff like that, but... Manticore. The, yes. Magical beings that play central roles are the direwolves. And the dragons. And John and, and Danny's parallel... To some extent, the ravens. Yeah. Like... Oh, yeah, yeah. John and Danny's roles are very parallel to each other. 
Their storylines are very parallel. Danny's very significant. Well, actually, she's the mother of dragons. So without Danny, there's no dragons. Without, without John, John, there's, there's no, no wolves. Dire wolves. Yeah, there you go. So, so it started then, that parallel. Right there. She is the founder. She gets the dragon eggs and turns them into something else. John. Through some magical through ability. Through some magical. Connection to the nature up there. Something. Hidden power in his blood. Yeah. Or whatever. Hidden wisdom in his blood or whatever Found the wolves and then was a driving force in them. Keeping and then, them and... And understood that they were meant to have them. Yeah. And made the compelling enough argument to shift the entire mood to we're going to do what John said. Mm-hmm. Right there. Ned deferred to John's judgment in the situation. He goes, all right. I'm not taking care of them, though, and there's mm-hmm. no way my kennel master is going to take care of them. He will not let them near his dogs because they'll kill his dogs someday, and he's not going to like them having them around. So you guys are going to take care of them. That's that. Period. But I think that was an interesting observation. I really... I just love when I find something that I feel like... Supports something that we've said. Exactly. And it's something that I had never thought about before. It gets exciting. Like, we had talked about John... Finding Ghost. By instantly bonding to him before. We had brought it up in live streams. I'm not sure if we ever talked about it. We talked about it in our remake of NAJ. Did we? I couldn't remember. Yeah. Which also seems significant. And then we had done the podcast a while back based on that conversation I had with with Hard Spain where I was... About how his is the oldest because its eyes were opened. And it symbolically represents John being the oldest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because (laughs) as a general rule, the oldest puppy will open its eyes first. Yep. And And his eyes were open while all the rest were blind. Yes. John magically saw and or heard something that... Everyone else was blind to. Correct. Like... That's... He whole, says it right at the end. He like, the last line of that chapter is, it was interesting, or one of the last lines of that chapter, it was interesting yeah. how John's wolf's eyes were open while the rest were blind. And, and that's drew, a metaphor for he, John being the one that was responsible for this. Yeah, and he's like drawing your attention to it. John's wolf's the oldest. John's wolf's the oldest. That's why his eyes are open first. And John's the one that found them. And John's the one that found them. The rest were blind. Using some, some sort magic. He, everyone else doesn't have quite the same bond to them that John does. Yeah, I agree. John's seed is strong. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyways, I know this was kind of a little bit of a disjointed sort of shorter one. No, I think it was good. I think it's really interesting. It was just something that I wanted to talk about in kind of this type of form and wanted to share it with you guys because I don't know if it was really word of, worthy of turning into like a real theory video. It just kind of adds to what we had previously said. So I guess it's time to sign off. But don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share this and do all that other good stuff and we'll see you next time.